everybody, and thanks for joining me today. So again, still working on flowers and vines. And, oh, pardon me, getting into the garden wall here. Yeah, It's coming along. We are coming on to a third done now. So probably, yeah, I won't reach it today, but by next session, I think I should for sure. Yeah, it is a bright sunny day, but very, very cold. We're under extreme cold warning, so yeah. <laughs> Not fun. It's, you have to run your car for 15 minutes before you can drive it anywhere. And uh, yeah, I have a remote start and it's like press the button and sit there cringing, waiting to see how rough it is when it starts up if it will start up oh wasn't too bad though yeah the block heater battery blanket combo did its job so <laughs> yeah definitely no walks outside today <laughs> but then yeah like i said like a couple days from now the forecast is calling for it to be above freezing so yeah it's just wild. Our temperatures jump around like the stock market. <laughs> like I said, yeah, you can experience summer and winter in the same week, I swear. Because, yeah, you could have like that year when we had snow really late, just before June. And then a couple days later, it could be hot. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah, I noticed my relatives in BC. They're not in northern, they're in the lower part of BC where it's generally warmer. Yeah, they've been seeing snow more and more often the last decade. Because when I was a kid, we would get snow every every five years maybe, and usually just for a couple of days. But yeah, they're starting to get times where they get a good amount of snow for a couple weeks or longer. So yeah. Yeah, driving out there is not fun because uh, we had so much snow, it was, and then uh, it got driven on and not plowed, and then so it got packed down, but like not evenly. Yeah, so it's like a wash, driving over a washboard, just, yeah. You can't even go the speed limit because it's just like rattle, rattle, rattle. It's so rough, yeah. Oh. Of course, there's always some people who try to push it, but generally, most people are going, are fairly reasonable. Yeah. Like I said, there's always somebody out there who wants to drive, you know, at 100k as if it's bare, and it's not. <laughs> yeah, that's one of the problems, too. Our roads get so rough because it's such a huge temperature range that you can't really get um, a good mix for the uh, asphalt that uh, can handle the extremes because yeah like we have temperatures that go to you know minus 40 and in the summer sometimes plus 40 and that's a big range yeah in fact they had one year a few years ago they paved sort of the big main highway that runs through town and uh and then the next summer they had to do it again because whoever did it picked the wrong mix and it could not handle anything below sort of minus 20. Yeah. And we get temperatures well below that in our winters. So yeah, it contracted so much and it cracked up so bad that yeah, by the next summer it looked like it hadn't been done at all. So yeah, that really sucked. Yeah, I think they were trying to save money, but it was one of those, in the end, it ended up costing you more in the long run. Yeah. Yeah, so I have people say that about, you know, glasses are so expensive, and they, they recommend the online one, and I'm going, yeah, but I got cheap glasses once, and they didn't work, and the place would not admit that they had messed them up, and I mean, I tried wearing them for, like, close to a month, because, you know, to give them time to adjust, but it just, I could not. 
it was awful. And so, yeah, I ended up finally having to go and buy a decent pair of glasses. <laughs> Ugh. We had moved to this new town, so I had just picked a place in town, and yeah, it was not good. So I ended up going back to my old uh, place, even though it was a couple cities away, and they're like, what are you doing here? I'm like, well, I got glasses from you for like five years, you know, five times in a row, and they were fine. So I said, I'm not taking the chance of going to someplace new again. That did not work out for me last time, so... <laughs> Yeah, I think those are fine if your prescription isn't really bad, but mine is really bad. It's almost minus 10 and yeah, extremely nearsighted. Like without my glasses in order to see something clearly, it has to be like so close that I'm cross-eyed. So yeah, basically if I'm not wearing my glasses, like I had one time I was using a face mud mask and so I couldn't wear them and I wanted to read and so I used my Kindle and I turned the uh, font like way up and then I had to hold it to close to me and like close one eye because otherwise if I had both eyes open, yeah, I was going cross eye <laughs> from focusing on it. So yeah. And someone say, wow, that's dedication to reading. I said, hey, I had to sit there for 15 minutes. I'm not going to sit there for 15 minutes doing nothing. Ooh. Yeah. I rarely do one thing at a time. So I'm definitely not going to do nothing. <laughs> Ooh. I mean, I suppose I could have listened to audio or something, but yeah. I was at an exciting spot in my book and I really wanted to keep reading, so. <laughs> oh yeah, so I was watching this um, series by FX called Kindred, which is based on a book. And uh, it was eight parts and I didn't know that they only had adapted half of the book and that they were expecting to get another season and then they didn't. So I was like, oh, I was so upset. So yeah, I got suckered. I ended up buying it because now I have to know how it ends. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of frustrating because um, I don't know. I found that network is usually pretty good that they finish what they start, but yeah, they canceled this one and then they were complaining because not enough people watched it. I'm like, well, how well did you promote it? Because I heard nothing about it. And it came out like 2022 or something, yeah. And I only found it because I was on, um, I was browsing on Disney Plus and uh, it came up as a suggestion and I went, oh, okay, I'll give it a try. And yeah, so. So yeah, I paid over 15 bucks for the book because that's how much it cost for the Kindle edition. And I almost never buy things full price because yeah, I watch for the Kindle sales every day. They have the daily deals and uh, I check those every day and they have monthly deals as well when books are generally one or two dollars. So I have a huge backlog of books I got for, you know, two bucks that, yeah, I generally, I very rarely pay full price for a book. If I did, yeah, that's like a huge compliment. Because I had one where I did that. I actually got the first book in the series for free. And it was so good. And I looked up the, um, the description for the second book. And it was exactly the characters I was hoping would be the protagonists of the second book. So, like, yeah, I bought it instantly because yeah, I needed to know. But I was kind of disappointed because she was going to write a third book. And... Uh, you know, it said watch for the third book and she gave the name of it. And I went and looked for that one too and she never released it. And those came out like 10 years ago. So I don't know what happened, but I guess plans for that fell through. So yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, because the person who had been the antagonist for the second book was going to be the protagonist for the third book. So I was really looking forward to that. I like when authors take not necessarily villains, but characters who weren't, you know, that they definitely weren't heroes and then redeems them. Yeah, that's, that's definitely fun. Especially because there's some and you just think there is no way the author can redeem this character and then somehow they do. Yeah. Well, yeah, I had one time I wrote a review on a book just saying that I did not like this main character and I just 
did not see how the author was going to be able to redeem them. They were too heinous. And this person like replies to me in all caps, like, why does he need to be redeemed? I'm like, well, for me to like it, he does like calm down. Jeez. You know, <laughs> don't have to get that steamed about it. I'm just giving my own personal opinion. If you like it, that's fine. You know? Yeah. I often say, you know, people, they get so upset and I'm like, look, life would be so boring if we all thought the same, right? Yeah. I think it's totally fine that people can consume the same piece of media and have completely different views on it at the end. Yeah. And I mean, I'm usually careful to say this is not what I got out of it. Not, hey, you're wrong. You know, just, I disagree because of this. And, yeah, I don't know. Some people just don't know how to do civil discourse. <laughs> like, yeah, we don't have to agree on everything. Ugh. Honestly, I sometimes like reading the uh, ranty reviews people write on stuff. Even on books that I enjoyed, it's just, it's funny to see that often like the thing that I loved about the book was something that another person hated about the same book you know it's interesting how like I said we can have a different experience well because I guess we all don't approach things from the exact same viewpoint right our own biases and you know personal experiences and stuff will change our perception so that's why yeah we can watch the same movie or read the same book and feel different things about it Okay. Yeah, as there was a podcaster I was listening who was saying basically, yeah, don't release a book if you're not prepared for readers to find, to take a, have a completely different take on it than you did when writing it. Like she said, once you release it, it doesn't belong to you anymore, you know? Oh, I remember there was a few years ago, somebody wrote a review saying that, you know, I found this author's voice very um, confusing, the way they phrased things and, like, stuff. And every negative comment or review, this author would go around commenting, like, F you on it. It's just like, e <laughs> you're really committing career suicide there. Like, yikes. Yeah. I mean, yeah, again, like, it's fine to read a review and think, wow, this person's completely out there, you know, that's not what I meant at all, but yeah, in the end, if you can't handle that, yeah, don't put your stuff out for public consumption. Okay. So yeah, we got a fair bit of confetti here, as you can see. So this piece is going to see how many stitches we get done this session oh there's one already parked there duh i knew that <laughs> i even marked it but i wasn't paying attention yeah let me see once i get past these flowers and vines and get into the wall it should go a little quicker because there's fewer colors there for now this is quite a detailed area and again i said uh stitching with my color flow method so it's not diagonal but there aren't any gaps either still like i say try to close in on a maximum of three sides not four oh, my biggest thing is if i leave gaps i will probably forget to do the some stitches and i hate having to search for all those stragglers at the end. Ooh. Pattern Keeper certainly helps with that too. Yeah, when I first got Pattern Keeper, I wasn't parking. I was stitching cross country, but yeah, it did help reduce the number of missing stitches I had to fill in later, although I still got them. <laughs> Yeah, my method was so different. I had things on bobbins, so I'd have to take out the bobbin and unwind all the threads and then do the stitches and then wind it all back up and put it away. And I said invariably, as I, I would put it away and then 
yeah, go, ah, and my husband would say, oh, you missed one again, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, after a while, he knew it. He knew if I just put a bobbin away and then got upset, that's why. <laughs> mm. so ready for it to be spring, but I know it won't be for a while. Yeah, I had a feeling I'd done that. I split through, accidentally sewed right through this thread when I brought my needle back up, so pull that out and do it again. I don't do that very often, but <laughs> I did it today. We often would end up having our Easter egg hunts inside because it's just too cold. <laughs> yeah, some years we've done it outside. It just alternates. Of course, also some years Easter is a little earlier than others, right? Because it runs by the lunar calendar. So, yeah. Yeah, I remember the year of lockdown, I forgot to buy an uh, egg decorating kit at the store, and I wasn't going to go just for that, right, because we were trying to avoid, yeah, public places as much as possible. That's what we were supposed to do, so, yeah, I ended up winging it, and uh, I used uh, from frozen berries boiled up to make the purple, and... Uh, yeah, some spices in my cupboard to make other colors, and I still had some green food coloring left because, um, yeah, my mother-in-law had brought it over when it was our son's birthday because uh, green is his favorite color, so he wanted green icing, so she had brought some food coloring and then left it with us because she said, well, I'm not going to use it much, right? So, yeah. Food coloring is expensive, yeah. I didn't realize it because we used to have it at when I was a kid all the time because my mom would make um, the homemade Play-Doh. Yeah. And then color it with the food coloring. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, we had to keep it in the fridge, I remember. And you had to keep it sealed up without any air, as little air as possible because, yeah, it would dry. Dry out, and there was yeah a couple times I was playing with my toy kitchen, and I made you know like a play-doh cookie, and I put it in, and then I forgot to take it out again. I found it like a week later, like oops, hard as a rock now. Oh. Goodness. Ugh. <laughs> yeah, the worst thing about the spring thaw around here is that the um my front walkway, the edge of the roof extends it doesn't completely cover it it's kind of like halfway through so unfortunately all the melting snow and stuff drips directly onto it and then it it freezes into a solid sheet of ice oh it's awful so yeah we uh we always tell people to use our back door and try to block it off because yeah the front walkway is bad and my husband actually moved our mailbox Instead of being at the front door, he moved it to the end of the pillar before the walkway. So that way, uh, the mail carrier doesn't have to walk over that. Because, yeah, we don't want it to be a hazard for them. Like, we try to keep it clear, but it's it's really tough. Yeah. We want to redo it one day, but it's sort of one of those... If we redo it, we've also got to do the drive... 
redo the driveway as well because they're connected and that is a really expensive thing to do so yeah for the time being we just fight it so what my husband says he's going to do instead is because we've got like this like rock area of rocks and that's actually underneath the uh, edge of the roof and then the walkway and what he wants to do is break up the walkway and actually put the walkway under the edge of the roof where it will be protected from getting snow and ice on it so yeah then we won't have to fight it anymore <laughs> Yeah, apparently when they first did it, it was higher up off the ground so that the water would sort of run off it and onto the grass and not form a sheet of ice on the walkway. But over time, of course, it sank into the ground. And so now it's like a well. So, I mean, yeah, where else is the water going to go, right? It always flows to the lowest point. So, yeah. So I'm going to stitch out to here for a bit, and then I'm going to go down and fill out some more of the flowers. Yeah, this is more of the, the wall here, or the pillar, I think. Yeah, it's or like the scroll work on the wall. So yeah, I had more of a, a really wavy line last time, and I kind of filled it in so that it's not so it's a little straighter now so i think i did the math and when i am completed this entire pass i will be at about 35 percent done so like i said there's nine passes but the top two are taller so yeah it's not exactly divided into nine equal strips because of that. So that's why even though there's three out of nine done, it's not going to be exactly a third. It's going to be a little past that. Okie doke. Yeah, I'm hoping we don't get any more big drops of snow on us, but I think it's too early in the year to think it's done. <laughs> Although, yeah, I cert I say that uh, where I grew up it didn't snow much, but it rained a lot, and yeah, I found that a lot more depressing. Like, I have people say, well, you don't have to shovel rain. I'm like, yeah, but, like, the sky would be all gray and blah, and yeah. Yeah, it rained a lot. Like we had one year, it rained for like almost two months straight. It was, ugh. It was like a new record. I think I was in sixth grade or something. Yeah, it was just so depressing. Yeah, my, um, when I first met my husband, his family lived up in uh, Hope, BC, up in the mountain. And she said, yeah, she found winter really hard because because the mountain would, of course, block out the sun for a lot of the winter because of where they were situated on it and that her house plants would be dying and yeah. So yeah, I'm really sensitive to that too. Ooh, okay. Okay, this actually may be where I cut it off. We'll see. Yeah, I could actually choose to sort of follow the this color sort of down a bit or not. We'll see what I decide to do. I tend to follow the colors more as they go sideways across than up and down, yeah. <laughs> I don't plan that far ahead. I just kind of figure it out as I go. It's like life. <laughs> well, I often say I'm one of those people who can't like watch a whole tutorial and retain it. I'm somebody who 
learns best by doing it. Yeah. Because I've had times like with knitting projects, they didn't have any diagrams. It was just described with words. And I was making slippers, so there's quite a lot of different construction involved, you know, so that things curve around the foot and stuff. And yeah, I, I read the directions like over and over and over, and I'm like, okay, I cannot picture this in my head, how it's going to go, but maybe if I just start knitting it, but then I get there, and yeah, that's how it worked out is when I got there, following the directions at the time while holding the piece in my hands, that I was able to make sense of it, so yeah. Yeah, because I had a lot of friends, too, like, saying with ADHD, it's hard to follow video tutorials for them, which, yeah, I have the same issue. I said I really like, like, text and picture tutorials and things with bullet points, so, like, I can scan for the relevant information. And I said, well, if you do make videos, I really appreciate when people put a timestamp so that I can find the parts especially with since I'm probably going to refer to it while I'm also doing a thing so it's nice to be able to go oh wait what did they say about this thing and being able to jump to the correct part yeah okay So yeah, like I said, I did the math and it's 102,300 will be exactly a third done. So yeah, I won't get that today, but probably by next session I'll be there. So it'll be a few months until I get to the tail feathers again, my favorite part. <laughs> I think there's even more in the next pass. Yeah. And more wing feathers. And I think, yeah, we even get the top of the, the second bird. The peahen is in the next. Yeah. his tail is kind of the the focal point of the whole piece so yeah it takes up the most space in this yeah well it would hardly be worth stitching a peacock if his tail wasn't really showing right
So this summer, I don't think we'll be doing any traveling. In fact, um, my father-in-law says he might actually drive out here to visit all of us. If he's not actually moving by then, we'll see. Yeah. But, because, yeah, we, uh, we try to go once a year, but of course we went back in, uh, in the end of last year to visit my mother-in-law before she passed. Yeah. So. Yeah, I wasn't able to make the funeral, but my husband went, but yeah, we wanted to be to be there while she was still with us. We figured, yeah, we couldn't make two trips, so we'd rather make the trip to see her while we could still say goodbye. Yeah. It was funny because I was putting it in my phone on my calendar that he would be away for the funeral. So I wrote like his name away and then I typed in the F and it tried to autocomplete it to finally. I'm like, wow, phone, thanks a lot. Like, I don't feel that way about him. <laughs> oh. Well, I guess before I know it, it actually will be summer, and then it'll be harvest time. Because, yeah, my my apple trees, pardon me, my apple trees are ready. Uh, yeah, my apple trees are ready in, like, early September, generally, so... colors on here so I don't mix up what I'm doing. I do that way too easily. Yeah, we'll see if we have a good crop this year or not. It can fluctuate, but we have had some cold snaps, which usually helps. I find the years we don't get a really good freeze, I don't get as good of a harvest. So, and yeah, like I said, my old tree has been dying for a while now. We've lost over half of it because uh, it was rotted and then we had a windstorm and it blew a bunch of it down. And yeah, it, like they said, sometimes you can sort of strap it back up to the tree and sometimes it'll heal. But yeah, that one was just the trunk was so rotted, there was no way. Yeah. But I said, like, that tree is, they live 30 to 50 years, and yeah, like, the tree, I think, is probably close to 50. I think it was probably um, um, planted when the house was built, so actually be more than 50 now, because the house was built in that 73, so... Yeah, just like that was how we discovered when uh, our bathtub got broken and we had to change it. That Yeah, they had brought in the bathtub and built around it because my husband had to break it into pieces to get it out of the uh, bathroom. Even with taking the whole door and the frame, like door frame off, there was no way to get it out. It was too big. So yeah, like I said, they must have put it in before they built the walls around it. Yeah. Our new one barely fit in there. It was quite a quite a production to get it in there because yeah, unfortunately the way that bathroom is sort of situated, we have like sort of there's the living room and then sort of it opens up and there's the hall going each way and then the bathroom is right there, but that means the walls are kind of in the way and yeah, it was yeah. I was glad we didn't put holes in the walls or anything doing that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like we said, we want to finally 
paint and everything well because um this house had aluminum wiring which is lousy it um it's especially not good when you live in a place with such cold temperatures because it contracts and it breaks and then it arcs and uh yeah my husband actually replaced it with copper wiring because he's he's a fully licensed you know electronics and so he can do that electrician and that so he did that because yeah like there were i think almost our whole block of houses was built at the same time they had aluminum wiring and like three neighbors have had fires from it so well we had one where i went through three microwaves before we realized that the plug for the microwave was arcing and burning it out and yeah and then my husband checked and he said like it was actually soft and he could poke it it was like okay yeah we're not using this anymore <laughs> until i could rewire it <laughs> like thank goodness we didn't have a fire because that was just a fire waiting to happen so yeah and actually it was good because he did that and then we got it inspected and then our house insurance decreased because yeah with aluminum wiring we were having to pay a higher premium because it has the greater risk of there being an electrical fire so but yeah he said I don't know how this house passed code except maybe a you know envelope full of money being slid under the table because yeah like he said in the attic was just a rat's nest of yeah bad connections and yeah like I said we were on borrowed time we were really lucky <laughs> yeah we had uh some neighbors across the street happened and thankfully it was mostly smoke and they got out nobody got hurt and it was put out but uh there was one house a few houses down from us that unfortunately it happened in their attic and it happened on christmas eve when they were not home and uh so nobody you know knew there was a fire happening until neighbors across the street actually could see it from their house and called the fire department and then we had had a bad snowfall and it was sheer ice and so yeah there was a hard time for the uh the fire engine to get out there so yeah unfortunately by the time they made it there the whole top floor was fully involved and yeah they put it out but that house had to be just gutted yeah yeah i felt so bad for them because they said that's one thing if they'd been home they would have smelled the smoke or whatever and yeah it could have potentially been put out before the house was almost a complete loss and there was one on the corner same thing and we actually saw them where they had to yeah again almost got the thing and have a i think it was an ozone machine or something to to remove the smoke smell yeah because that that lingers <laughs> yeah it's not good Okay, so I'm just looking at the colors here. And they start striping up this way again. Okay, I might as well just I'm gonna do this one and then park it for a bit. I sort of try not to work over such a huge area at once when I can, especially when I'm stitching with you guys because I like to have my camera nicely zoomed in on where I'm working so you can really see the stitch detail. I know people, people like that. To get up close and yeah. Yeah, so my friend was working on, um, has been working on, I think it's called a window with a view. Um, Heaven and Earth Designs charted it. And yeah, she is almost three quarters done now. And it's looking amazing. Yeah. Yeah, she's working, I think, on 28 counts. So yeah, <laughs> her project is much smaller than mine. And uh, she's doing tent stitch, although... You really can't tell. Like I said, you have to have like your nose right up to it to see that it's not a full cross stitch. Yeah, I know there's some people who are saying like it shouldn't be in a cross stitch group because it's technically not cross stitch. But I'm like, yeah, it's all embroidery. 
It's like I see people get this big thing about what's better, knitting or crochet. And I'm like, look, we're all just people who like to play with string. People think we're weird. <laughs> and I say there's no objectively better either because it really depends on what you want to make. So... Like somebody mentioned, could you crochet socks? And they're like, well, yes, technically you could, but they would be probably pretty uncomfortable because crochet is generally thicker and stiffer and doesn't have as much drape. So, yeah, like I say, different stuff works better. Um, you Making crochet slippers is a, usually a good idea because, yeah, they can stand up to the wear quite well because they are denser and stiffer. Yeah, Yeah, I made knitted slippers, but... The problem is they do wear out pretty quick unless you have like the leather soles on them, but you can buy the slipper soles, but they're expensive. Yeah. Like way more than just buying a pair of slippers <laughs> costs. Yeah. Yeah, there was someone saying they were knitting socks and somebody said, oh, you know, anything to save money. It's like, oh no, have you seen how expensive sock yarn is? It is cha-ching, yeah. You do it because you enjoy doing it, not because you're trying to save money because, yeah, machines can do it way cheaper. <laughs> I've never actually knitted socks. Like I said, the yarn's expensive and I don't feel like, yeah. Slippers I'll do because I can do those quickly. Like, I can knit up a pair of slippers in a few hours, so. But socks, generally, you use a much thinner yarn to make a better, you know, a fabric that's more flexible and so it takes a lot more stitches so it takes a lot more time to do yeah yeah it's funny i remember um my husband and son loved watching the mythbusters show and they did one where they were testing the could you knock someone out of their socks and uh they actually had um a bunch of viewers had uh donated hand-knitted socks for them to use on the uh, mannequins so that was pretty cool and they determined that you know you could knock someone out of their your their shoes but not socks socks are too tight and form-fitting that yeah they stay on but shoes you can yeah yeah kind of sad that show ended because it was a lot of fun Yeah, my husband said, like, that would have been a dream job, right? You get to design these things to test myths. He would have loved doing stuff like that. There we go. Okay, I'm going to have another thread up there. Yeah, because they're kind of branching off in different directions, so... I said this is a high confetti area because yeah, I've usually got over a hundred stitches done by now but with so many colors it's been slowing me down yeah or someone said they were pretty annoyed um, NCIS had an episode where someone had used a knitting needle as a weapon and said oh great you know now it's gonna be even harder to get my knitting onto the plane <laughs> Because generally they're allowed to, they're supposed to allow you to bring it, but it really depends on who you get, who's inspecting your work. Yeah, that decides, determines whether you're allowed to bring your knitting on. Yeah, there's there were tricks people talked about. Someone said they used their, their knitting needles as like hair sticks and they used bamboo ones. And so, because it didn't set off the metal detector and stuff, they got away with it. There was someone who said they did the same thing and they put it in a pencil case with a bunch of pencils. And uh, so they let them bring it, but uh, yeah. I never brought my knitting on a plane because I was afraid they were gonna take it from me. I don't wanna lose my project. Like they said, you can at international airports, they have places you can mail stuff to yourself if you're not allowed to bring it on the plane, but yeah. I didn't really want to do that, so usually I just brought myself a book. <laughs> Let's color 
33, right? I would call her 34. Oh, I said it's not spring, but we do have some more birds. So there's that. I think you can hear them outside right now. At least they've stopped trying to nest above our bedroom window. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. We put some repellent stuff there, so. Because, yeah, like I said, we have three trees in the backyard that they're more than welcome to live in. Just not right above my window, because then you start chirping super early, and I like my sleep. <laughs> I'm not like my sister who gets up at like four or five. They have chickens and she has a rooster, but she says it doesn't bother her because she's already awake. So I'm like, oh, good Lord. I only want to acknowledge one five o'clock per day and the AM one is not it. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, it's funny because when we were kids, we were more night owls, but she took after our mom, who's a mega early bird, and I took after our dad, who is a night owl still, so. Like I said, why does it people, they marry each other, right? <laughs> mm. Well, my husband and I are kind of both night owls, though. Although he can sleep any time. I think it's a skill from the military because he used to be, and uh, yeah, like he'll say, how long till dinner? I'm like, 15 minutes. He's like, okay, I'll go take a nap. I'm like, wow, really? 15 minutes would only be enough time for me to like just start drifting off. Yeah. I would be more groggy from trying to sleep for 15, 20 minutes than if I just didn't bother. Yeah. feeling that wouldn't stay threaded. It was too short. lot of live needles because I don't have very much many left on my needle holder there.
I said, I don't know if I will complete this pass this month. So there's still like over a dozen columns to go from here. So that might be a bit much. We shall see. By the end of next month, absolutely. <sighs> yeah, like I said, I try not to uh, make any goals or predictions anymore because it was getting me stressed out when I couldn't make them. Yeah, some months I could and then some months I couldn't, so. Especially if unexpected stuff came up. Which tends to happen because, you know, that's life, right? Finally close to hitting a hundred stitches, yeah. Like I said this was a lot of a lot of confetti here. Oops. There. Kind of wrapped around itself there. Might be time to reset soon. I just take all my needles off and make sure my thread is nice and smooth and untangled. We'll see, for now we're good.
And again, I'm going to have more than one thread here because they diverge a bit. Okay, so once I stitch these two, I will be exactly 500 stitches away from uh, from being a third done. Ooh. <laughs> Like I said, I won't hit the third done mark today, but I would say pretty much certainty that by next session I will be I will be at that the third done. Woohoo! Yeah, I gotta celebrate those milestones when you have these huge projects. Okay, just gonna check. 
all the threads I've parked here. Okay, yeah, that's a long one and it's closer. So, so I will use that one and then this one I will tie off. So I will yeah, do the one stitch that it is parked in and then end it. No longer need two. Okay, I think I'll do these and then that's where I'm going to take a break for now. So, yeah. Need to get up and stretch. <laughs> I spend a lot of the day sitting and I know I need to <laughs> keep myself moving, so... reach a third done by today but I will by the time I join you again I should say for the next session so yeah thank you so much for joining me today and hope to see you here next time all right thanks everyone bye